I'm going to take you through the game between Luke McShane and Adiban Baskaran from round four of the Isle of Man FIDE Chess.com Grand Swiss Tournament. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting us on Patreon or PayPal. So McShane against Aliban, well, two very creative players and this game certainly lived up to expectations. Bishop b5 from Luke McShane. Um, he plays a whole variety of different systems. Um, I wouldn't describe him as a great theoretician, but he very cl cleverly picks different systems. You know, he plays the man, not the board. So he hasn't gone into an open Sicilian, which will maybe suit um, Adiban's style, um, but keeps keeps a lid on things for the time being. And queen takes d7 is the most orthodox move here, but knight takes d7 envisages a, a certain setup for black, which uh, I've always enjoyed playing, actually, more on that in a second. So all pretty standard so far, and now d4, so uh, McShane is about to set up the so-called Morozzi bind with pawns on c4 and d4 clamping black's center. And uh, Aliban has this so-called hedgehog setup with pawns on the third rank that is a barrier, um, but it, black looks very modestly placed, but basically is ready to break out. And this is a great counter-attacking system for black. I've always loved playing this. And b3 looks normal. And here, well, black has a choice between putting the bishop on g7 with g6 and bishop g7 or bishop e7. Uh, it's a question of taste which one you go for. I've played both moves, actually. <clears throat> I would slightly prefer bishop e7 to just give the d-pawn a bit of protection. But, well, as I said, it's a question of taste which one you go for. There are pros and cons to these moves. So really, the middle game is starting here. Uh, Adiban played queen c7. Now, I would definitely prefer in this position queen a5, which just reminds white that there could be some tactical problems here for white if black manages to break with b5. But also it means that the queen can sometimes swing across to h5 to offer an exchange of queens if necessary. But queen c7 played. It's it's still absolutely fine for black. And here I'm not sure about black's next move. Um, in this kind of system, rook e8 is pretty standard. Which looks strange, putting the rook uh, against this pawn here, but you have to look further down the file. It's opposite white's queen. And what this means is that if white attacks with the f4, then you can break with e5. Now we see one of the advantages of playing with g6, that the f5 square is covered. So the knight can't hop in there. And after this exchange, then, well, um, prob probably knight takes. Uh, yeah, I think we can get away with knight takes, actually. Um, but, but possibly rook takes as well. I'm not sure. Maybe this one. Anyway, we can see that there's going to be pressure down the, F, uh, down the E file after we double here. So let's go back. That's certainly one option, rook E8. But rook FD8, yeah, I'm not sure about that. After F4... Um, very logical attacking move now that the rook has moved away and e5 isn't so attractive in this position. Well, Adiban played the queen to b8. Now that's a long way from the king's side and I like McShane's next move, knight f3. He could have played f5 straight away but knight f3 is canny because he keeps these options both these options available. He might push with e5, 
he might push with f5. And to some extent, Aliban forced the issue with knight h5, threatening the pawn here. So McShane pushed on with f5. And with Black's rook away from f8, this is very logical because now the pawn on f7 is weakened. Um, and also e6 as well. There's no rook on e8. So Aliban had to shuffle back with the rook. Pawn exchange here. A rook takes isn't possible because knight g5 is a crushing move, followed by knight d5. Uh, that looks dreadful. So pawn takes pawn. So black is still covering these squares here with the two pawns. But now that um, f file is open, black has to be very careful. And McShane's next move was really beautiful, really thematic. This is textbook stuff. He played e5. So what he's doing is vacating the e4 square. And once that knight hits there, then it hits a couple of very sensitive spots in black's position, d6 and f6. So let's see how this works. Knight takes. Knight takes knight. And here it looks very ugly. I mean, black could compromise like this. At least the bishop is protecting the f6 square, but from a positional point of view, it looks wonderful for white. But that means you don't get checkmated, <laughs> not for the time being anyway. But bishop, bishop e5 really is the move we ought to be trying to play. And in fact, it's not too bad for black. Knight e4, so this is what we're talking about that knight. He looks at these two very sensitive squares. And, well, we can see the effect of this straight away. What about d5 to protect the bishop like this? Try and bring the queen back into play. Well, in fact, black loses material straight away with this and knight f6 check. You have to give up the queen. And that's obviously very pleasant for white. Should, should be winning. Okay, let's go back. So Aliban after knight e4 played bishop takes b2 and queen takes b2. And this is a crunch moment in the game. Aliban broke out with d5. He just wants to give a pawn back to bring this queen back into the game. You can see that queen is miles away from the queen side and this is one of the problems, uh, sorry, miles away from the king side, I should say, excuse me. In fact, black's best move here is to play rook f8. Offering an exchange of rooks. And, and if black can somehow shift these major pieces across the board um, and exchange pieces, then he should be okay. Um, white would like to play g4, push the knight out of the way and then land on f6. But black has a little tactic here, exchanging rooks and then offering another exchange. You can see that if rook takes rook, queen takes. Now this would bring the queen back into play threatening a mate on f1 so all would be fine and in this position after rook e1 then black breaks out with d5 and you can see there's been a real transformation there because black's pieces are coming back into play um, if we come back here I mean after after rook f8 in fact g4 just isn't a good move white should play like this and queen d4, white's going to get this pawn back and is certainly better in this position, but um, not so much. Black should survive that. But instead of rook f8, um, Aliban played d5 straight away, so he is anxious to bring his queen 
back into play, which is which is very logical, very understandable move. Um, and here is where Luke plays a superb move, and this is so typical of his style. He's a real calculator, and he spots little tactical ideas that can just spin the game in his favour, and that's what he found here. G4. This is an extraordinary move. It's the kind of move that perhaps once you consider it, then you would appreciate how strong it is. The problem is actually considering the move in the first place because it looks really ugly to an adv to advance a pawn in front of your king. Uh, but it is fantastically strong. Okay, so if the knight retreats, then knight f6 check is winning. That's clear. So this knight has to be taken. And we take the knight on h5. Um, well, I mean, black is, let's, let's see, black is a pawn up, I think. Yeah, something like that. Um, the big problem is the open G file and the fact that white's major pieces are all in play, whereas black's major pieces are just stuck here and not really contributing. So it's all about the relative activity of these pieces. Uh, so what about bringing the queen back into play? This didn't happen, but let's just see what happens on this. This is an interesting variation. So white swings the queen across to attack g6. Black swings the queen across. White recaptures the pawn. So now material is level. But this is still very promising for white. So there's going to be a threat to pile up on, on the pawn here. And black just can't defend properly because that queen is in such a dominating position. And the best that black has is actually to just try and trade pieces quickly, um, but give up the pawn on e6. And obviously with an extra pawn and well, more active pieces, then white has very good winning chances there. So Adiban didn't play that, but what he did was perhaps even worse. He played e5. An exchange of pawns on g6. And once again, this move queen g2. And black is utterly lost now. You can see that queen is just completely out of play rook c6 to defend the pawn on g6 and now rook d7 and there really is no defense here if rook f8 now this is instructive okay we duck the exchange we just play rook d1 and there is no decent defense to queen h3 this is absolutely dominant, the, the rook on the seventh rank. So here, and queen h6. Well, this is a case of white being a queen up here because that queen on b8 plays no part in the game. Very simple, very mechanical. So that's the position rook d7 just played. Rook d6 and rook f7. So again, just establishing that rook on the seventh rank and it can't be exchanged off now that the rooks are connected and the game finished like this rook f6 and the g6 pawn is just dropping no defense takes and queen g5 now it's just a case of of moving in and you can see that um i mean this pawn actually these pawns just get in the way and this queen just hasn't got time to come in to attack white's king, which is, well, lacking pawn cover, but because white has the initiative, it's not possible to exploit that at all. And McShane wrapped up very nicely here. 
Gotta play the rook in the way a check. And now it's just a case of liquidating into a completely winning king and pawn in game. And the king emerges and here Adiban resigned of course. So the king is just going to collect that pawn. We distract black's king with this one and the king comes in and then heads for the queen side. Well, a beautiful game by Luke McShane and so typical of his style. I think Adiban will be a little bit disappointed with that one. But, well, we know that he has kind of extremes in his play. He's capable of absolute brilliances, but then, well, you know, crashes out the next moment. So this win means that Luke McShane is now joint leader of the tournament and is rewarded with a game against Fabiano Caruana in the next round.